Elon Musk's SpaceX is attracting the attention of all mankind. The history of the space industry will turn a new page. SpaceX is working around the clock to prepare for the first orbital Starship flight test. During the debut orbital flight attempt, the Super Heavy Booster B-4 will push the Starship SN-20 into Earth orbit from Southern Texas. So all halos seem to shine on these two flying vehicles and have forgotten the presence of one part that can help SpaceX to ensure that flight. And SpaceX founder Elon Musk refers to the entire zone as Stage Zero. We have received a lot of questions from the audience about this area. How will they combine operations with two flying vehicles? And how do they affect SpaceX's vision for the future? All will be revealed in today's episode. If you're new to our channel, a hearty welcome from the great SpaceX team. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification bell so you won't miss any of SpaceX's latest news. Now let's stop wasting time and jump right in. First, let's find out, in the words of Elon Musk, what Stage Zero is. Stage Zero includes all launch pad support structures, which include the launch tower, mounts, propellant tanks, flame diverter system, among many other vital things surrounding the launch pad. The GSE propellant tank farm will be connected to propellant lines that lead to the launch mount and launch tower, where the Super Heavy Starship launch vehicle will lift off from. In a recent interview with YouTube science communication blogger Tim Dodd, Everyday Astronaut, SpaceX founder Elon Musk said that they do not plan to recover the Starship SN20 during the first orbital flight. For the first orbital launch, our goal is to get into orbit without exploding, Musk told Dodd. He also said that Stage Zero is much harder to build than a Starship launch vehicle, and that he hopes Super Heavy does not blow up on the launch site during the first orbital attempt. To be totally frank, if it takes off without blowing off the stand, Stage Zero, which is much harder to replace than the booster, that will be a victory. So, please do not blow up on the stand, Musk said. Well, that's understandable when SpaceX's CEO has repeatedly stated a desire to offload as many systems as possible onto the launch pad. So, Stage Zero will be a sustainable connection for SpaceX to make future flights beyond Earth. Next, let's dive into the details of the inner workings of Stage Zero. First of all, let's talk about the tank farm area. Starship is designed to open the door for humanity's sustainable expansion to Earth orbit, the Moon, and eventually Mars. To accomplish this lofty feat, it has to be a massive rocket, measuring approximately 120 meters or around 395 feet tall and 9 meters or 30 feet wide, Starship and Super Heavy will weigh on the order of 300 metric tons or around 675,000 pounds when empty. Once filled to the brim with cryogenic liquid methane and liquid oxygen propellant and gas though, a two-stage Starship will easily weigh more than 5,000 tons or 11 million pounds shortly before and after liftoff. Further, SpaceX wants to be able to launch at least two Starships from Boca Chica in rapid succession. To meet the staggering needs of back-to-back -back Starship launches, SpaceX has thus had to design and build what will be the world's largest launch pad tank farm. Work on that tank farm is already well underway, though progress has been slower than expected. The site's foundation and a few associated blockhouses were mostly completed by January of 2021. Labeled GSE for ground support equipment, the first signs of those self-built storage tanks began appearing at the Boca Chica factory in mid-February. By early April, the company had completed the first of at least seven steel propellant storage tanks. Recently, the company successfully lifted off the GSE Tank 7 to a concrete pad, and GSE-8, maybe the last tank, is being installed at the production site. Many people still wonder why is there a GSE-8 when there are only 7 GSE tanks? The answer is actually quite simple. It's because during production they removed one tank, which was GSE-4. Sorry conspiracy theorists, no conspiracy here. Notably, SpaceX chose to manufacture those storage tanks itself and ended up building structures virtually identical to the tanks that already make up most of flight-worthy Starship and Super Heavy airframes. However, if SpaceX were to simply use those unmodified tanks, it would be almost impossible to store Starship fuel for more than a few hours, and maybe just a few minutes without it warming up past the point of usability. 
As such, SpaceX's final Starship tank farm design involves seven Starship-derived storage tanks and seven contractor-built tank sleeves, measuring around 12 meters or around 40 feet wide and 40 meters or around 130 feet tall. Those cryo shells will enclose all seven SpaceX-built tanks, allowing the company to fill the 1.5 meters or 5 foot gap between them with an insulating solid, gas, or some combination of both. With those shells and insulation, SpaceX's custom-built Starship tank farm should be more than capable of storing cryogenic liquid oxygen and methane for days or even weeks. Likely to the relief of many, on August 26th, SpaceX appears to have successfully tested a prototype of the custom-built Starbase propellant storage tanks, known as GSE-4. They filled the dome structure with sub-chilled liquid nitrogen to subject it to high pressure. Remote cameras by Lab Padre captured footage of the testing operation. The GSE tank developed frost and started to vent, which confirmed that SpaceX was conducting a cryogenic proof test. The GSE tanks must be strong enough to store cryogenic propellants. That's exactly what one might expect of rocket tankage slightly modified to serve as ground storage tanks. Next, I want to talk about the highlight of Stage Zero, which has attracted a lot of interest from space fans. The Launch Tower At the end of July, after less than four months of work, a team of SpaceX workers and contractors installed the final prefabricated section of a 145-meter or 475-foot-tall tower meant to support orbital Starship launches. Above all else, SpaceX's first custom-built launch tower is a sort of backbone or anchor point for several massive mechanical arms that will accomplish the actual tasks of servicing and perhaps catching Starships and Super Heavy boosters. Work on all three of the arms expected to make up what SpaceX CEO Elon Musk has described as Mechazilla has been visibly underway since the last week of June, as a small army of welders carefully assembled dozens of sections of heavy-duty steel pipe into house-sized frames. Almost exactly two months later, SpaceX installed the first of those three arms on the exterior of Starship's skyscraper-sized launch tower. Known as the tower's Quick Disconnect, or QD, swing arm, the standalone structure is reportedly designed to accomplish a few different tasks. First, as its unofficial name might suggest, the QD arm will hold a Quick Disconnect umbilical connector that will temporarily attach to the base of starships to load them with fuel, oxidizer, and other consumables and link them to ground power and networking. Beyond the comparatively mundane QD arm, Musk says that SpaceX will ultimately install a pair of massive house-sized steel arms mounted on a sort of external elevator. Those arms will apparently be capable of actuating and moving up and down the tower with the speed, precision, and reliability needed to quite literally catch super heavy boosters, and eventually starships, out of mid-air. And the team tasked with designing and building those rocket-catching arms have affectionately deemed them chopsticks. By replacing a tower crane with giant arms, SpaceX will hopefully be able to stack Starship on Super Heavy and Super Heavy on the launch mount, even in the high winds that are almost always present on the South Texas Gulf Coast. If SpaceX can also reliably catch boosters with those arms, it could be a significant upgrade for the operations side of Starship reusability. For now though, only time will tell. Now, when it comes to the launch tower, we must mention the Orbital Launch Mount, or OLM. The OLM will be a great combination with the launch tower. The duo will help each other in the process of assembling the Starship and Super Heavy booster, and the process of capturing these two vehicles. By mid-March, SpaceX had begun clearing away some of the dirt on top, revealing a beefy foundation with six two-foot thick or around one meter piles, buried at least 100 feet or 30 meters deep in the sandy wetlands. After three months of construction, we have seen six pillars of the orbital launch mount, and at the end of July, OLM was fully debuted when stacked with the orbital launch table after nearly six months of around-the-clock assembly and outfitting. Designed to secure, fuel, and launch orbital starships, the launch table has to be able to withstand the approximately 5,000 metric ton or 11 million pound weight of a fully fueled starship, hold super heavy in place during static fires and pre-launch ignitions that could produce around 7,500 metric tons of thrust, and survive the unspeakable fury of 33 Raptor engines operating simultaneously. 
Unlike all other major orbital Starship launch pad parts, the custom launch mount and table's successful and near total completion is an absolute necessity for any kind of orbital test flight or full up super heavy static fire. Only part of the tank farm is truly necessary, and the vast majority of the tower's intended task can be completed with workarounds if neither are fully ready. Without the launch mount, however, testing much beyond what SpaceX has already accomplished is mostly impossible in the near term. And that's all the important parts about Stage Zero that we want to bring to you in today's episode. If you like what my team and I are doing and would like to help assist us with what we do directly, you can become a patron through our Patreon link in the description below. Don't forget to share your ideas in the comments below so we know where to improve upon. Once again, thank you so much for your support. This is Kevin from Great SpaceX, and I'll see you next time.